in this episode, we head to a Polaroid Haven. They've got everything you could ever imagine here, and they fix and restore them too. We get to look at a whole bunch of different Polaroid cameras and kind of learn a little bit about the history of Polaroid throughout the years. And of course, we get to play with some pretty cool cameras. Let's jump in. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. YouTube, what is good? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we got a really cool video. We actually went to Brooklyn Film Camera to go visit and get a tour of their facility. Uh, they're a store, they're a repair shop, they're a community hub. There's a lot of stuff going on in there, so I'm very excited to go check it out. And I didn't realize it, but we've got a very special guest in this video. Let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome to Brooklyn Film Camera. Hello, what's going on? You know, all good. Shooting uh, a film. Who Stan are you? Rich. I see it says. Uh... Oh yes, I'm Ben. Ben Fraternelli. And where do we know you from? I feel like you're familiar. I mean, somewhere. look, I have a little YouTube channel <laughs> in an instant. Now you might know me from BFC TV. You know, we, lo we love go. video content on film photography out here. So this is this is a bit of a surprise. What are you doing here? Are you involved with this place somewhere? Yes, I am. As of this year, uh, Kyle DePew, our founder, who is currently gazing at our uh, gallery wall, um, <laughs> he he uh, he reached out earlier this year and said, uh, Ben, like you know, we've connected through this film photography community, and you know, I see what you're doing, and you see what we're doing, and we kind of want to expand what we're doing, and yeah. why don't we do that together? And I thought, okay, well. I'm a photographer, I'm a director, I have a lot of video work that I'm currently doing, but I'll do it. <laughs> and so I basically, I basically was like, I cannot possibly pass up this opportunity <laughs> to be involved in something that I care about so much professionally. Yeah. And it's like an unbelievable chance. And we've moved into this big new space together. Yeah. And it's crazy. This place is fresh. It smells new in here. The smell was really a priority for me. Um, <laughs> I, I thought if the smell's gonna be off at all, we shouldn't even do it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was gonna have fun recording this today, man. I forgot, <laughs> forgot how many lines you got in your backpack. Oh yeah, today. I have a lot of lines about smells in, in particular. <laughs> all right, so this place, well, we'll talk about all kinds of stuff that goes on here, but sure. obviously first and foremost, you guys sell stuff here. Yes. What do we got? All right, so here at Brooklyn Film Camera, we have film. And we have camera, uh, and we have accessories. We have uh, our Polaroid wall over there that has all of our premier SX70s and SLR680s. Uh, because not only do we sell film and cameras here, we also have a repair technician who's a specialist, specially trained over in the Netherlands to be able to repair these cameras right here, the Polaroid SX70. Um, and so we repair, we sell, we buy cameras too, yeah. and uh, yeah, we're heavily involved in all phases of what we're doing here. That's dope, that's dope. All right, before we get into all that camera stuff, yeah. behind me, yep. I see a pretty cool wall. Yes. Can you kind of come of over course. here and show this off? So I think this is my favorite part of this store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. going on here that's not just... For okay. sure. I, one of our primary missions going into this whole space was we don't want people to just walk in and okay, it's a store, okay, take out your wallet. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if they take out their wallet, it's cool, but yeah. we wanted the community and the art to be the forward-facing aspect of what we're doing here. Yeah. So the gallery wall has a monthly rotating show. It's a great opportunity to get artists in here who we really love. Erin, uh, her Polaroid collage work is absolutely stunning. I've always yeah, been a great admirer of it. I haven't even looked at it. But yeah, it's, co it's completely it. insane. And the fact that this amazing, talented artist yeah. traveled to, from LA to install this work, someone that I've admired, and it's like now a part of our space for yeah. the next month, this kind of opportunity is just unbeatable. And yeah, yeah. when we have like the opening party and the community's in here and they're yeah. admiring the work and it all just really ties into like what we want to do here. No, this is great. I'm excited. I, I'm close now. I, like I told you, I moved nearby. <laughs> All right, so Polaroid and yep. instant photography is yeah. obviously big heavy for your brand, sure. big heavy, I guess, for this store's brand as yeah. well. What do we got here that's specific to that kind of neck of the analog world? Absolutely. So Polaroid, the brand, has this little space within our store, which we think is kind of amazing. Um, Polaroid has been a very critical part of the business from the beginning because multiple uh, founders of the business, essentially our first employees worked at the Impossible Project, gotcha. which is the company that saved Polaroid film from extinction. And so those employees who were leaving their New York offices poured it over into this space. 
And so we became Polaroid specialists. Just it was natural. It was yeah. a natural fit. And as we've continued expanding, and as Impossible Project became Polaroid, everyone has sort of grown together. I think. Yeah. And this, I think, is a culmination of that. It's like these people used to work basically at Polaroid, yeah. and now Polaroid's working with us, and it just feels like a perfect matchup. That's it's, awesome. It's beautiful. Before we continue, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. So I actually just got up and running with my Squarespace site, and it was quite painless. There's a couple of things I really like. First off are the blogging features. I really love how quick and easy it is to set up a blog and include photos, videos, links, all of the above. And I think every photographer should set up a blog so they can discuss their images, post them in high res, and just have a way to connect with their potential audience. I also really love the galleries on posts. You can basically upload a bunch of photos in sequence and have them pop up next to each other in a specific way. And you can click through and look at them. This is a really good technique for storytelling, especially with your images. Instead of just posting them one by one, you can put them together in a gallery so that they all have a common theme and interest. Lastly, I'm quite excited about the online stores. I haven't set this up yet, but I'm going to, and my hope here is to sell my prints. All photographers love selling prints, and this is a really cool way to do so in a very personalized, direct way. So make sure to head to Squarespace for a free trial. And if you use my link, squarespace.com slash ribsy, you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, before we continue this tour, I, this caught yep. my eye, and I, I think I saw you put this on Instagram. Yep. Uh, can you just explain what's going on there? This is the Graflex XL. This is actually the last camera that the Graflex company ever made in-house. And uh, it's a medium format slash variable format camera. It has interchangeable backs. Yeah, let's um, get up close. Yeah, right now I have the Polaroid back on it, which yep. is kind of funny because usually you see Polaroid backs and they're just a solid black rectangle. Yeah. But this is actually in the style of the old land cameras. Um, right. So it kind of, and it kind of matches kind the of style of the body. This is Type 100, so currently I have FP100B in there, ah, okay. uh, the black and white. Um, the lens is really like one of the biggest selling yeah, points this of this thing. Giant. I mean, yeah, okay, it's huge. Reference. Yeah, let's get that the size reference. Of my fist this well. has a Zeiss 2.8, like a similar lens that I have on my Hasselblad, and the fact yeah, yeah. that this thing is mounted on two. Eight? Yeah, two oh, eight, what? and this is rangefinder focusing. You can focus as close as two and a half feet. Um, so it's kind of got my goose beat in some ways. By goose, I mean the Polaroid 600SC. Is this thing like SC. a crazy expensive find? It's or actually just... not. This camera is. I've never heard yeah, of it. this camera is very uncommon. Yeah. So it's rare, but it's not that expensive. Yeah. You can get a body for 200 bucks. That's awesome. Uh, the lens might be hard to hunt down, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all have our sources. And it sits awkwardly like this in its resting position. The camera's just sitting there, like, look at me. It's like, do you want any of this? <laughs> also, the orange, the orange shutter yeah, trigger, that's like, nice. or yellow, I guess. We're all going colorblind out here. <laughs> that's cool. No, and yeah. You say you can shoot 120 here. Can you yeah. adapt any of the other stuff, like, like this, the Lomo bag? Like yeah, all yeah of you theoretically could. The the They produced a series of backs for this. Yeah. You can shoot 6.6, six, 6.7, six, 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 natively with the camera in the backs they provide. Yeah. Um, I think there's a 6.45 and the Polaroid back. And there's ways to like adapt it for 4x5, but yeah, those yeah. are really rare. So. You'd be hard pressed to find one of those. I'm gonna take a photo of you on this later, oh, so you better be yeah. ready for that. I, I'm ready. All right, I'm dressed good. up today for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing because I did not. No, you look great, <laughs> and it's black and white, so you know. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, just Turn record, on. move it around. We got a big ass dark slide that comes out, and we're ready to rock. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Three, two, one. Yeah, buddy. Incredible. <laughs> Absolutely serving me looks. How was your dismount? It was good. I, I not Olympic level, but <laughs> no. I, I my knee hurts a little bit. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you are severely injured now. Ooh. Yep. Ooh, Let's this hope is the for the best. Satisfying yeah. part right here. There we go. And boom. And now we let this cook. Why don't we peel it inside? <laughs> okay. Peels on reels on YouTube. Peels on reels. 4K, oh Whoa. baby. Wow. Yo, dude's looking cool. Did we wow. go back to like 1910? This honestly does appear to be pre-1911. <laughs> disregard the, the pickup truck in the back, but. Yeah, no, that's actually part of it. The Model T. Wow, the vignetting is oh, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I don't have a lot of experience with the black and white FP film. Yeah, FP 100B is, is a little great, but this is less. Dope. I like it. And I there's like a lot it. of headroom here for just to, for imagination, <laughs> you know? 
Hang out. Thank you. Thanks for blessing me. Of course. You're, it was my honor. Like, uh, like $100 poor after that? Exactly. <laughs> but it was worth every cent to spend it with you. All right. So here we are. Yes. Um, I see a wall of cameras behind you. Um, what's going on over here? So these are our pride and joys. As Polaroid specialists, like I was saying, we very much honed in on the Polaroid SX70 as sort of our... This is like our home camera. This is yeah, the yeah. thing that we provide that other people really can't provide in the same way because we have in-house repair technicians. We get a high volume of SX-70s. We treat them nice. Uh, we have a special department that handles them. So they're very yeah. much like at a core of BFC. Um, and we have all the variations, of course, um, including some custom builds. Like this is a Polaroid SLR 680 with clear housing. That's Which, cool. you know, if that doesn't catch your eye, Wait, you're so not, you're not looking. You're, so you, you're selling Polaroids here as if like, not if they're new, but like you're, you're sourcing them. You're yeah, them essentially, them. yeah. That's given, not like people sending them to you for repair. That's separate. No, yeah. Uh, these are Polaroids that we've sourced. Some of them are in newer condition than others, sure. but because of the high volume of parts that yeah, we have, yeah we're able to restore them essentially to new. Yeah. Um, and because we do all this in house, we have like a one year warranty, which yeah. no one else can offer that. Exactly. And we actually can handle the back end of that warranty. It's not like we're just, all right, let's just send them a new one. We're actually taking the camera and like yeah. testing it and changing out components and things like that. So it's really one of the, like, the things we offer that we care the most about because I think the SX-70 is, I mean, look at this camera. This yeah, is the most beautiful camera. Beautiful. I mean, we gotta get up close here. Yeah. This is like the most interesting. Is that like a standard colorway or is this like- This a is a standard one? colorway, but the leather is a little bit of a, of a custom job That's here. Beautiful. Yeah, these things are gorgeous. SLRs with manual focus and exposure compensation and glass lenses. And it's like, yeah. what else could you ever want you out of a crazy? Polaroid? What? Uh, I've never shot an SX-70. What? <laughs> that ends it's today. On my list. It's that ends on my list. today. Never... You're going to use my SX-70 today. All right, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. How many of these do you think were made in the history of this camera? Because I feel like this was this was the shit at yeah, one point. Yeah, right? it was. Like, if you didn't have one of these, then you know, you didn't yeah. really, you weren't cool. Totally. I mean, the, the, the really interesting thing about this camera and that generation of camera manufacturing is that like millions of these cameras were produced. Yeah and now there's not millions of users anymore. So it allows us the opportunity to like have an excess of cameras for this new renewed interest in Polaroid yeah, yeah. and analog cameras. Um, unlike some other high-end cameras where there was not that many manufactured yeah. and now they're really rare and now they're really, really expensive, the SX-70 has maintained sort of a steady value because yeah. there's a lot of them. And the fact that we can repair them and restore them, they don't just get thrown away. Exactly. So we, we're, we're breathing new life into these it's the nicest camera ever made. It is, it's pretty cool. And honestly, the portability, I'm a sucker for portability yeah. cameras. I love folding cameras. Yeah. This is obviously a folding camera. Um, it's crazy how much, like, folding cameras that I've seen, they've never have, they're, they're not, they don't have mirrors, you know, they're not yeah. SLRs. Yeah. This has everything. <laughs> and can I show you one more thing? Of course. So this is, uh, if for those who might not be aware of what this thing is, oh, this yeah. is the sonar unit. So they, uh, after a few years of the SX-70 being on shelves, they upgraded it with this auto-focusing plate. So this is sending a physical sonar signal and pinging it off of the closest object and it immediately reports the sonar signal back to this plate. It was the first auto-focusing system ever introduced for an SLR, uh, which is like unbelievable that this is what they came up with for yeah. it. Um, it even beats like a lot of modern autofocusing technologies because it's sending a signal, yeah, uh, like yeah. a signal ping. It works in the dark, like in the yeah, pitch yeah. black, it will still focus immediately That's because awesome. it's not evaluating the light or anything like that. It's funny that sonar was used because like in my head, like when this camera came out, that's, that's yeah. since 1978. Yeah. In 1978, sonar must have been like the most futuristic thing yeah, yeah, yeah. to think about. It's like if you're into submarines, like maybe that like, would that's be what I Yeah, mean. or like it's James like, oh, Bond, but great yeah, yeah. Camera. <laughs> and it makes sense because Polaroid's history like was with producing military okay. equipment. Like yeah, before yeah. they made cameras, they were like a military contractor yeah, yeah, yeah. for optical equipment. So it makes sense they would incorporate something kind of weird like sonar yeah. into their AF. All right. Yeah. Uh, I know it's not on this wall, but there's one thing that I have to ask your opinion about. Yeah. Uh, scale of one to 10. Okay. What are the odds that we get a comeback of, you already know what I'm talking about. I, I know where you're headed with this. 
pack film? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I would say zero out of 10. Oh, I, I would say approximately zero. <laughs> I, I would say there's, <laughs> there, you know, there is Super Sense, which is a company that is currently yeah, yeah. Um, recycling chemistry from Polaroid 20 by 24 pods. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's something, but yeah. it's not really the thing. Um, and I don't think we've seen the thing yet. Sure. Uh, new 55, which produced 4x5 instant film, they actually were producing something new, yeah, yeah. but demand, they fell behind. I'm not sure, sure any of sure. that knowledge is gonna get passed on to someone who can really scale that operation. So I'd say about one zero, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I hate to be that. The, no, the, I, I need yeah. to hear that. Yeah, I we all need to hear it at some point. A lot of people need to hear that. Yeah, I know. I really don't. Yeah, that, no one, no one. Please comment anything on Polaroid's post. Bring back pack film. They can't do it. Yeah. They bought a factory without the machines to do it. Yeah. It would cost millions and millions and millions of dollars to build those we machines. We just need one like super rich yeah. person out there to be like. I'm the biggest photography fan of all time, and I've got all these billions with nothing to do. Yeah, like, like why did Elon Musk buy Twitter? He doesn't even I'm want saying. Twitter. <laughs> he could have bought. He could have bought Polaroid and returned PacFilm. Like <laughs> these sorts of things. Like Silicon Valley is not ready for this. Their mind's in the wrong place. Their mind's completely in the wrong place. They don't fix world hunger, and they don't fix the PacFilm problem. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, I want to go check out the, I don't know what to call it, the workshop? Something yeah, like yeah, the whatever. office, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> And now welcome to our like other crib. This is where we work. This is the office. Hey. And there's okay. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle. Hello. Nice to meet you, Kyle. Good to meet you, Tell man. Us Thanks about for coming. Uh, what do you want to know? Uh, well, you're Kyle, and you're the original founder. What, what's yeah. your relationship to what we got here? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm the original founder of Brooklyn Film Camera. That's that's my role here, and um, I do I do many things at Brooklyn Film Camera. <laughs> Yeah, there is a there is a quick backstory. I, I used to work for the Impossible Project back yeah, in the day, okay. and so this is the the project that you know saved Polaroid film. Yeah. We bought the last factory in the Netherlands and started reproducing uh, Polaroid film from there. Yeah. So yeah, I worked for the Impossible Project for for four years. Nice. Um, left there to start Brooklyn Film Camera, and then I'm trying to crunch the story. But yeah. then the Impossible <laughs> Project got rid of their camera department. They just decided to move it to Europe. Yeah. And then Brooklyn Film Camera had an opportunity to to grow. So we hired, or I guess I hired some of the uh, uh, camera technicians that were working there. Yeah. They started working for BFC. We kind of grew, grew, grew. Um, and yeah, eight years later, um, this is where we are now. So now we're in this eight new home years. and it's that's, that's pretty serious. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. So can you just give us kind of a walkthrough? What goes on in this office slash, to me, it looks like a workshop. Sure. Yeah. yeah it's a little bit of a workshop. Yeah. We're a little messy right now. So uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry Busy for that. Working. Busy at work. Um, this is one of the camera uh, intake desks, so this not a whole lot of excitement to see here, but this is where we process in cameras. So gotcha. boxes come in, we buy and sell cameras from people all over the world. Boxes come in, we open them here, we test them here. This is where it sort of starts. Mm -hmm. um, these are sort of managerial desk. This, this is, is where I sit. This is where Ben sits. This is yeah. my throne. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. I'm gonna put a picture of ribs up here. You're gonna nice. be on this wall. This so wall fame. yeah, this is a wall of fame oh, of wow. new visitors. Of course, it's not fully built out yet, but you no, know. No, no, but you clearly started something good here. We're starting oh, yeah. something, oh, yeah. yeah. Signatures and faces, and we'll have a full collection of legends like soon it. enough. Yep. It's my honor. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so this is uh, this is my very messy desk right now. Uh, look away! I'm just kidding. You can you can you can look at it if you want. Um, and over here, <laughs> if you want, um, over here, this is Tyler. He's uh, one of our SX70 hey, uh, technicians. And um, so this is where all the SX70 magic happens. And also, this this is Penny. You gotta say hey to Penny. Oh, the office pub. Oh, baby. Yeah. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hello? You want to say hello? Penny only You're repairs sleepy? Nikon FM3s. <laughs> He's sleeping. Penny's, Penny's sleeping. Penny's got too much swag. For, yeah, for yeah, us. yeah. I respect that. Um, and yeah, Shanna's back in the corner back here. If you want to say a quick, quick hello, Shanna. Hello. <laughs> there she is. Um, yeah, so, so we're standing in like SX70 zone. So this is where we restore uh, SX70 cameras and SLR 680 cameras. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a little bit of peek under the hood if you want to yeah, come in. Yeah. So this is this is all customer cameras right here. These are um, this is probably about a week to two weeks worth of customer cameras that we're currently working on. We have this crazy sticker system, so we know exactly what's going on with the cameras and how to move them through. Um, these are bins full of SX70 cameras that are that are coming in. So these have been serviced. These are waiting to be uh, detail cleaned and skinned. Uh, by skin, I mean re re leathered. Yeah. So there's racks and racks of cameras. Racks and racks of SX70s. And then it kind of works bottom up, like on the bottom are cameras that we've not touched yet. So they need to be serviced and re-leathered and detail cleaned. 
Um, and yeah, it kind of works its way up and then we've got customer cameras here. These bins to my right are just full of parts. This entire rack is full of Polaroid SX70 kinda, camera parts. I was talking um, to a repair. You can see on the desk there, there's just, you know, we're, we're loaded <laughs> with what we need to repair them. I was talking to a repair in the UK, PPP. Yeah, yeah. He basically made it clear that like parts are the, the biggest challenge. Like yes. if, you have, if you have parts, then you can do something. If you don't have parts, I guess you gotta make parts. Yes. Or, you know, you're out of luck. That's exactly right, yeah. Yeah, parts are the hardest thing. I mean, they haven't obviously produced this camera for 40 years. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, around 40 years. So there's no parts available on the new market, so yeah. we have to use old parts. So is we're constantly there... stripping cameras and getting what we need and, you know, kind of Frankensteining them around. Is there any yeah. problem that's too big to fix or, or you can pretty much do everything here? There's only really one. Um, yeah. yeah, there's only there's only really one problem that we can't fix, which is water damage. So that's, we have like a 98% uh, success rate on any cameras that customers send us to repair. Yeah. The only time we really can't is if there's severe water damage that corrodes the board. In which case, you know, your camera's dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, we can replace parts and make it happen. Come on over here. Do I sit? Like, no, no, you can stand oh, okay. and I'm going to get kind of close up. So come a little closer. Yeah, and give me a... Uh... Give me a look with your eye, but dumb of your head. Okay, got gotcha. Yeah, perfect. Three, two, one. Woo! Aggressive. Ha! <laughs> and I, and you're, you're gonna have to sign it too, obviously. Oh, yeah. Your boat. Oh man, I didn't want to write on the counter, so I stopped short. But uh, do you have a favorite number? Uh, like a like an NFL player signature? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what cool. What cool Four hundred maybe. All right. Well, thank you for guiding us around here. I feel like. Anybody comes to visit New York City, they gotta come here. I agree. There's a lot of cool stuff happening here. I agree. We're just having a great time in here, shooting film, spreading the love. Um, it's a culture, it's a vibe, and it's all about the community. And we're all part of the community, so we're here for we're here for you when you want to come yeah. by to BFC. <laughs> Peace. Peace. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button down below. And in the comments, tell me what is your favorite Polaroid camera. There's so many out there, and I know very little about them, so I'm really curious to hear what you guys have been messing around with. All right, y'all, to the next one. I'm out.